There are a multitude of meals that can be made with the goal of fat loss. To put it lightly though, some taste better than others. In today's video, we are going to go through a full day of eating with each meal surpassing the last in terms of deliciousness. And in this household, we never skip dessert. Let's get into it. First thing in the morning to break my fast, I want something that is quick and easy. Since we're going progressively more delicious per meal, there's nothing more average and easy for a first meal than protein snacks. My protein snacks of choice are gonna be this fast protein bar. I got them for a dollar a piece on Supplement Hunt, but also these pure protein puffs. Now these are kind of below average, but these again were a dollar on Supplement Hunt. And I'll post a link below. I just got like 10 boxes of these, which is gonna last me for like six months to a year, but they only costed a dollar and they have 130 calories and 18 protein. I'm gonna break my fast, get protein synthesis going and get plenty of protein to start my day. Macros for this meal are 340 calories, 38 protein, 22 carb, which a good amount of them are from fiber and sugar alcohols, and 13 fat. Let's get to meal two. Even though we technically broke our fast, I know there's going to be people that wanted a real, warm, gooey, hot breakfast. So for meal two, we are going to make my Japanese pancakes or my fluffiest protein pancakes that I've ever seen on the internet. Now I haven't made this recipe in months and there's always people that comment, oh, 30 minutes to make this or oh, it's so hard to make this. So I wanna time myself and I'm going based off of my cookbook instructions because since I haven't made it in so long, I wanna make sure I'm doing it right and that I don't forget anything. Sifting here isn't absolutely necessary, but it, again, we want this the fluffiest product possible. I really think the egg foaming part is really the part of the recipe where everyone thinks this is a lot of work, or really it's just mixing for a couple minutes. Typically, if I wasn't recording a video, I'd be listening to music or watching a video with my headphones in. I mean, it's light work, really. Looks like stiff peaks to me. It is very important that you fold this in until it barely mixes together. If you overfold it in, your pancakes aren't gonna be nearly as fluffy. So I'm really hoping this works out well, not only because the burner is very small, so it's probably gonna unevenly cook, but this thing likes to run hot. And these need to cook low and slow. Now we gotta put a little bit of water here so that everything cooks. These are gonna be impossible to flip if not. And we'll cover with a lid. And now we wait about five minutes or so. While we wait, it would be wrong of me not to eat some of the batter because that's like the best part. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell no, man. Also, while this is cooking, this is a very good time to get the dishes done. So after you're done eating, you have nothing to worry about. Nicholas, it's so hot in here. Let me out, it's so hot. Let's see what we got. The flip is the hardest part. Ooh, let's get it, 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 let's get it. Woo! Uh-oh. Oh, shit. I celebrated too soon. Oh, see how it's brown on one side, not as brown on the other? You really need a big enough plate to where it covers everything or else you could really screw yourself, really. But either way, these are gonna taste delicious. And this one just looks absolutely perfect. Looks not everything though. Taste is what matters most. <sighs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go. I'm ready to eat. I'm gonna give them like two more minutes to just make sure they're cooked all the way through. Even though a little raw batter in the middle, daddy likes. All right, let's plate these bad boys. I'm gonna put the fugliest one on the bottom. Then the mid girl on in the middle. And then the dime piece right on top. Like I said in the recipe video, you can eat these without any syrup. You could see how fluffy these are. I mean, these are ridiculous. 
These are guaranteed to be the fluffiest, best tasting protein pancakes on YouTube. On the internet, I don't care. Some of my zero sugar maple syrup. Oh my God. You just can't beat it. Okay, I'm gonna go take a shower because I smell like shit. I'll see you for meal three. Oh. Wait, we gotta go over the macros. For this meal, we have 350 calories, 39 protein, 45 carb, and 11 fat. Whew. All right, now let's get to meal three. There's nothing that quite tastes like nostalgia. And in this recipe here, we're going straight back to my childhood. For me, this nostalgia experience that we're about to go through makes this more delicious than both of the last two meals. And it only takes about 10 minutes in total to make. My dad always used to stop at this restaurant called Bill's Place. Typically, I would either get a slice of pizza, a gyro, or a ham and cheese pita. In this recipe here, we will be making a ham and cheese pita. And we won't be using a regular old pita, Last night, I made my protein pitas once or twice a week. I usually do some sort of dough meal prep, whether that be a baguette, whether that be a protein pita, whether that be protein buns. This only took me about 20 minutes from scratch, protein pitas cooked and ready to go. On top of our pita, we got some Velveeta. Could also use American cheese or white American, but this is just what they used at the restaurant that I always went to. Perfect fit, let's go. While we wait for the cheese to melt, I'm also just gonna add our mayo real quick. I don't usually do this, but I want a little bit of heat right now. And um, it says sweet cherry peppers, but they do have a little bit of spice to them. I love cherry peppers, and I think they would go excellent on the pita. The last thing we need to do to really make it taste like that restaurant quality is put it on a piece of parchment paper. Why put it on a piece of parchment paper, Nick? Well, anytime you go to a fast food place or even like a, you know, a quick takeout place, you get it inside of a plastic bag or a plastic wrap. When you go home, you taste it and you love that taste. You get that taste from it kind of sitting in its own juices, so to speak. We're gonna heat it up and then give it a minute or two to kind of commingle in its own flavors and then we eat. Normally I wouldn't be microwaving vegetables if it was for a very long time, but this is only gonna be in there for about 10, 15 seconds tops, so it's not gonna affect the vegetables at all. I used to work at Jimmy John's and this is almost like therapeutic, wrapping this up, I don't know why. This is what we're looking like, absolutely gorgeous. Lettuce is still doing just fine. Tomatoes are doing just fine. We made this in eight minutes and the pan wasn't even ready to start cooking yet. It was still cold. Cheers. I know you guys gotta agree with me. Sometimes the simplest things are literally the best. And this is the perfect combination of bread, meat, cheese, and a condiment all brought together with the freshness of some vegetables. I mean, you can argue that this is still clean. We didn't make any dishes. The only thing that went in here was a, a cooked pita. And then when we look at the macros, we have 289 calories, 11 fat, 32 carb, and 24 protein. For a quick and easy lunch or snack, this is beautiful. We're gonna wait a couple hours, and then we'll be back for meal four. It is time for meal four, but it was time to start dinner before I went to the gym. So I drank my current favorite flavored pre-workout, pina colada, with some glycerol for massive pumps. And while I was waiting for the pre to hit, I made my dough by putting all the dry ingredients into a food processor, mixing it with the wet ingredients, and throwing the dough into a bowl. I went to the gym, got a full workout in, got my toppings together for the pizza, and now my dough is ready to go, which took me about five minutes of my time. What kind of pizza are we making, you may ask? We are making a half Italian beef pizza, quarter cheese, quarter pepperoni. 
You already have the Italian beef recipe if you have the cookbook, which is just one of several perks that comes with owning the cookbook. So if you want to support the work I do and to get a consistently updated cookbook with first access to recipes, click the link in the pinned comment and use code E4CM for 10% off the cookbook. It's been about two and a half hours since I initially made this dough and we are looking very, very nice. If you know Italian beefs, you know on the bottom of the bread, there's cornmeal. So we're gonna recreate that and also have a nice texture difference that other pizza places in Chicago use just to use it in this pizza. This is honestly one of my favorite pizzas that I would get when I wasn't getting like a pepperoni or a sausage pizza. The first time I had a cheesy beef or Italian beef pizza, life changing. We wanna get this super thin. I'm going for like 15 inches here, 16 inches, because I got a new 16 inch baking steel and I've been making the largest pizzas I could possibly make. For those of you that don't know what Italian beef is, it's essentially roast beef in au jus, but it's different than a French dip au jus. They use different spices and ingredients that go into the actual beef stock or beef broth, whatever you wanna call it. Now this is about as wide as I'm gonna get it unless I wait like 15 minutes. So all we're gonna have to do is use gravity to stretch this out. So I just go with like a closed fist, like I'm gonna punch somebody and you just go around in a circle. And it's slowly gonna stretch out, especially when you get to the corners here. I honestly always measure to see where I'm at. I thought I was at 14, I'm at 15. Another trick to make this easier for anyone or someone that doesn't have a pizza peel to shoot this into the oven is parchment paper. Put this directly on it. Keep rolling the edges out because I want to get that really cracker thin crust. For this pizza, order of toppings is pretty crucial, especially because we don't want to dry the roast beef out or dry out the jardinera. We really want to get everything melted, uh, good browning on the cheese. So we're going to layer this to perfection. There are some places in Chicago that put the sauce edge to edge, but a lot of the places that I went to growing up left a little tiny like half inch edge without sauce, so there is a crust still. Some people, they literally go across the whole thing. I like to have a little tiny bit of the crust, have a nice crunch at the end, move on to the next slice. I like when people tag me on Instagram and show me their creations and they let me know their like variations of it and little tweaks that they made to make it for themselves. So definitely when you make this, make it to your preference. The first time though, I would make it how I put it and then be like, okay, I want a little bit less sauce, maybe more cheese, even though I do make it extra cheesy. Only half is for me. The other half is for the cream queen. So I'm gonna make her side first since her side is easier. The great thing about making au jus is when you make it once, you have it for days. I, I would keep mine up to a week. It definitely, with everything that's in there, it'll keep in the fridge. And I've been making Italian beefs night in, night out. Well, Italian beefs or Italian beef pizza or anything Italian beef, because all I have to do is put the roast beef in the au jus, heat it up for a few minutes, and it's ready to go. And it keeps getting more and more flavor with every round of roast beef that I put in there. So it's just getting better and better. So tonight it's gonna be unreal. It's also important that you really get your beef super shredded. You can see this is just falling apart and that's exactly what we want. Some of you might not know what jardinera is. I've been going through so much of it that I actually bought a bucket of jardinera. And especially because down here in Texas, we just got jardinera. They didn't even know what it was six months ago, but HEB started getting it and it's like $6.15 for the little tiny jar that's this big. And this one's about $4.50 for the same tiny jar when I buy it in bulk. What would a pizza be, especially on a high protein channel, than fat-free cheese? This is just a beautiful thing. And now we're getting real fancy. We got some Parmigiano Reggiano. If you only got the regular Parm, use that too, it'll work. But Parmigiano Reggiano wins every day of the week. And I'm just gonna evenly spread this across the pizza. Oh shit. And then we got Parmigiano Reggiano's younger brother, Pecorino Romano. And the two combine to make just the greatest of sensations and tastes in your mouth. It's so great. And the final ingredient, of course, is some part skim mozzarella. I like to stay about 
an inch or so from the actual corners or the edges because the cheese is gonna spread out and you don't want a bunch of the cheese just leaking onto the parchment. I mean, it's a waste. And that, my friends, is a goddamn pizza. My oven's preheated at 550. We're gonna throw it in there for about 10 minutes and this time lapse is going to be so, so soothing. We're gonna cut this like a real Chicago pie, which means into squares. I'm not even joking you, this looks exactly like a pizza you would get in Chicago. Being in Texas, I am so fucking happy that I can now have pizza that tastes exactly like Chicago. And I advise anyone who is watching this to make this as soon as you can because it is just, Mwah, chef's kiss. Now we want the bottom of the crust to stay crunchy. And to do that, we gotta get it to be able to aerate underneath. Beautiful. It's too hot to eat right now, but I've been eating it for the past three or four days, every night essentially, and over the past week, like five or six times. I know how good it is. Let's go over the macros for dinner. Now I'm gonna eat half this pizza. For half the pizza, we have 1,027 calories, 99 protein, 72 carb, and 40 fat. Worth every single calorie and 100 grams of protein, I mean, come on. So I'm gonna eat and I will see you back for meal five, best meal of the day, dessert. Like presents on Christmas day, you always have to save the best for last. And in terms of eating, that is always dessert. So today, we're gonna make some ice cream. Now, the things that I hate about the creamy, it takes 24 hours for you to get to your final result to where you can actually make ice cream. Things that I love about the creamy, you can buy as many pints as you want, make a bunch of them at the same time, store them in your freezer, and have them on the ready whenever you want and have a bunch of different flavors depending on what you have a taste for that day. They are super cheap to make. You can make pints with ridiculously low calories, way lower than any of the low calorie companies out there. The consistency is actually like ice cream and you could scoop it and put it into a waffle cone. And honestly, I could keep going. The list goes on and on, which is exactly why I have over 20 recipes both on YouTube and in my cookbook because I just love using it. And 24 hours ago, I made my Fruity Pebbles ice cream. This is gonna take about five minutes, but also zero minutes of work. Put it into the creamy, press a button, and you wait. Literally, if you don't have a creamy yet, and you could find one on the black market, the gray market, the actual internet, or <laughs> ninja.com, I highly suggest you get one because it's just unbelievable. Let's wash this bad boy off and load it up. We're looking for a nice soft serve today and look what we got. Looks like perfection. But you can't have a creamy without a nice gaping hole. I mean, really, like, what are we even talking about right now? This thing is unreal. Come on. I mean. Super creamy. Tastes exactly like Fruity Pebbles. It is everything that I want in a dessert. All right, but for how many calories, you ask, Nick? Well, I substituted the almond milk for regular milk, so it would be lower calorie, but it'd also be lower protein. 302 calories. 23 protein, 77 carb, a shit ton of which come from Swerve, and five fat. That leaves us, on the day, 2,308 calories, 223 protein, 247 carb, and 80 grams of fat. 2,300 calories, and I ate pizza, pancakes, and ice cream, and I got 220 grams of protein, loved every single meal that I ate and they got progressively better over the day. 
<laughs> you just can't beat it. And the great thing about 2023 is there isn't just one set of meals that can create a calorie deficit for fat loss. And in this video here, I show just how good you can eat with only 1600 calories to spare. These are completely different meals than this video and they are all delicious in their own right. Until next time, deuces.